students uh, today we'll discuss uh, lecture 6 of function in this chapter in this lecture we will go for some piece wise defined function what we have already discussed before this but uh, least integer function which is the part of the piece of defined uh, piece wise defined function we haven't discussed uh, earlier so uh, today we'll discuss piece wise defined function and more on transformation as previously transformations already discussed so transformation of gi function transformation of fractional part and fractional part of the transformation and gi of the transformation we will discuss in detail although least integer function is not the part of je syllabus but uh, sometimes they may ask as this is also a complementary composition of gi function as you know gi function is called floor function and least integer function is called ceiling function despite of gi function ceiling function is just uh, ahead of the integer ahead of ahead of that number the integer considered ahead of the number as it's uh, by name it is clear that it is a ceiling function so and uh, gi function is the floor function so the number which we consider for the gi we consider the number uh, integer before that integer before that number so let's uh, start of gi function so, uh, ceiling function so in piece wise defined function one of the function which was a least integer function let's we go for least integer function what is the definition let's say least integer function is represented by y is equal to bracket x despite of gi function here we use a small bracket in the gi function we use a uh, square bracket so you know let's see uh, this is uh, let's say this is uh, y equal to small x small bracket x that is called Uh, least integer function and a small bracket x is always greater or equal to x integer on x integer just on the right of x what it mean let's see uh, here let me discuss in detail so if you see uh, let me take a number for a choice you can choose choose any number let's say uh, we are choosing 1.7 One point seven. So GI of one point seven. What we studied, GI of one point seven is one. Clear. But one point seven least integer, as we have to put like this bracket. Here the value is two. So on the number line, if you see, this is one point seven. So before one point seven, what is the GI? What is the integer? That is one. And after one point seven, what the integer two? This is the least part. Means small x. small bracket x and this is the greatest integer part gi of x you know we say square bracket like this this is the concept of uh, function that we say uh, least integer function so let's say take some more example in negative numbers and others also so uh, you see over here so this is the least integer examples illustration of the concepts in studying the concept 0.3 value is 1 minus 0.5 is 0 and 1.3 is 2 it is also known as you know this is ceiling function this is also known as ceiling function let me uh, mark this point this is ceiling function this is called ceiling function fine what is the definition of this ceiling function but before this to just go for definition let's we discuss more about in the ceiling function so let's say minus 1 point minus we say minus 1 point 4 minus 1 point 4 ceiling what the value is think about let's say here this is minus 1 and here you call any number this is minus 2 so where the minus 1 point 4 is here here somewhere minus 1 point 4 you know minus 1 point 4 head of minus 1 point 4 this is the ceiling function so this is minus 1.4 you know this is minus 1.4 ceiling part that is minus 1 this value will be here minus 1 but what about this one minus 2 when it will come this is gi of x so minus 1.4 gi that is minus 2 this is the part of the ceiling function let's take some more example over here to think about this uh, we say uh, Let me see for you. So, 
let's say uh, minus root 2 where is minus root 2 right so now we are interested to find minus root 2 ceiling minus root 2 ceiling is means minus 1.414 that is the same as uh, previous so the result will be minus 1 but uh, minus root 2 gi that will be that will be minus 2 you know and uh, let's take some more example over here that is also called ceiling of x which one least integer function is called ceiling of x let me note down here this is ceiling of x and greatest near function which was also called floor of x right okay fine so ceiling of x that is when x lies between 0 to 1 you see when x lies between 0 to 1 the value is 1 when x lies between 1 to 2 the value is 2 when x lies between 2 to 3 the value is 3 means uh, 2.5 if you see 2.5 uh, this one ceiling 2.5 2.5 we say ceiling of x that is what we say here 2.5 that it will be um, 2.5 lies between 2 to 3 so the result will be 3 here this is ceiling means upper part above part and uh, if we say minus 1 if we consider negative number minus 1.2 minus 1.2 so ceiling is minus 1 you say ceiling will be minus 1 okay fine so the graph is goes like this way between 0 to 1 as despite of gi function uh, it is the value is 1 over here but in gi function the value was 0 okay so here between 1 to 2 you see that is 1 so between you can take this part here between 2 to 3 that uh, between 2 to 3 the value is 3 so on y axis it's just like constant graph between 2 to 3 uh, that is 3 between 3 to 4 that is 4 Achha, although uh, one of the part is here that is right side that is right right hand non strict inequality is there left hand strict inequality is there so what we say over here this is a uh, uh, ceiling function is right handed non strict inequality or you can say left handed strict inequality so the graph is uh, the graph of the definition is shown in this figure right so let's take some more about this one ceiling function we can extend this graph we can extend this graph for other values of x as for negative region for positive region although come to the domain and range of the function the domain of y equal to fx is x belongs to r and the range is y belongs to i as integer part is the range and uh, if you see the continuity although limit and continuity we will go for the next chapter after this function in detail but if you see the continuity uh, as in gi function which was the also called floor function that was uh, gi function is always uh, discontinuous at every integer so continuous except at integer here also uh, the same way we if we uh, observe the graph here we can see that the breaks are all integer values so hence y ceiling of x what we read over here y ceiling of x is discontinuous at every x belongs to integer at every x belongs to integer part okay periodicity if you see over here so here the least integer functions uh, if you see the prop periodicity from the graph we can see that y equal to ceiling function of x does not repeat after any interval therefore y equal to x is not a periodic function properties of least integer function if you see zf this one ceiling of x plus n is equal to ceiling of x plus n where n is any integer you say let let's see we what we are recalling over here that is 1.2 and plus suppose if we write here 5 and we are going for ceiling so what is ceiling here so 1.2 ceiling is of course that is you can't say there is a 1 this is 1.2 ceiling that is uh, what we call here that is 2 so 2 and here uh, its value is 2 means 1.2 ceiling and plus 5 5 will uh, go ahead so 1.2 ceiling that what we say here that is 2 and here that is 5 so what we say over here that is 2 plus 5 7 so that is 7 right means 5 simply comes over here 
here the five if it is any natural number is added then it simply comes over here so uh, what we say here ceiling of x and plus fraction part of x and minus i integer where x not belongs to i so uh, sorry one uh, x minus one and uh, x not belongs to integer then this property will be correct here you see this property is correct only when x is not an integer second property i am talking about second property let's see uh, in detail second property this one this is x and here ceiling part of x x is equal to ceiling part of x and here plus fractional part of x fraction part of x and minus 1 you have to write right so let's see 1.2 so 1.2 2 ceiling value will be 2 so 2 minus 1 and that you will can come in 1 and that will become gi x so ceiling part of x and minus 1 uh, will provide x and uh, means gi of x and that will become fraction part of x let me talk about this in detail so uh, you can say also that is uh, uh, in, or in other words you can say for gi of x you have to make it minus 1 in gi of x if you make it minus 1 here then you will get the uh, x part okay fine and here that is fraction part of x what is the fraction part of x you have to note down you have to go for just like 1.2 the fraction part is 0.2 and here 1 and 1 minus 1 that is 0 okay fine so what we recall over here fine so what we say come to the point minus x ceiling is minus of ceiling of x or minus x of ceiling that is minus ceiling of x plus i if x is not equal to integer if x equal to integer then it's okay if x equal to integer then it's okay fine this i am talking about this part minus x is equal to minus ceiling of x and plus 1 and x ceiling of y one more property property number 4 n plus 1 by 2 ceiling plus n plus 2 by 4 ceiling plus n plus 4 by 8 ceiling is equal to 2n you can prove this also if you find difficulty i will prove later on Let's come to the point property number fifth ceiling of x is equal to ceiling of x plus 1 by n ceiling of n plus 1 by here you can write x over here let me write this as this part is x this is not n this is x let me correct it this part is x okay x what what the number we are concerning about this so this is ceiling part of x plus 2 by n that what we call here ceiling part of x plus 2 by n and here then ceiling part of x plus n minus 1 upon n is equal to from first of all each and every part you will get uh, n times of x so n times of x ceiling here you see that's the ceiling part of uh, ceiling part of what we say nx right and plus n minus 1 n belongs to integer n belongs to natural number you can say means positive natural number so once again if n belongs to natural numbers then the ceiling part of x is equal to x plus 1 by n plus n plus x plus 2 by n plus so on dot 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 x plus n minus 1 by n that is nx ceiling plus n minus 1 okay so now these are the property you can note over here and uh, you can prove this also in a very easy manner by the definition of the ceiling using ceiling function so let's uh, come to the this one transformation of 9 although uh, let me once again uh, mind this remark here over here that ceiling is not the part of je syllabus uh, je only asks the questions from greatest integer you have to make a thorough revision of greatest integer all the properties of greatest integer also all the transformations also we will go for the greatest integer functions and functions of greatest integer but not for the ceiling function ceiling function is also one of the part of the piecewise defined function so that's why uh, i have uh, given a sim uh, simple idea of ceiling function we uh, somehow if uh, some uh, some way they ask the question from any corner uh, and especially for j main not on for advanced in iit doesn't uh, follow ceiling function any type of ceiling function over there just uh, for sake of knowledge i am giving although gi is also 
not they emphasize but uh, that when they want to make some tough questions then they focused on gi functions so be aware about gi functions so let's uh, let me go for transformation of nine once again uh, you just uh, before uh, recovering the idea of transformation nine you have to go thorough revision of gi function as uh, i have given the gix uh, gix is the integer means the least integer function that is also called floor function you can say here so gi of x that is y equal to fx y is equal to uh, here we have already discussed the how to draw the graph of gi of fx all the once again i will make a revision later on but uh, gi of fx i have given the idea in the previous lecture you can go through so in this transformation 9 we will go for y is equal to f of gix okay so let's start uh, y equal to f of gix how to find so what is the working rule over here y is equal to f of gix step 1 you can note down draw y equal to fx first of all what you have to do draw y equal to fx okay step 2 plot the x equal to k vertical lines till they intersects the graph of y equal to fx where k belongs to i integer draw horizontal lines of one unit parallel to x axis parallel to x axis from point of intersection y equal to fx from point of intersection y equal to fx and vertical line to meet the nearest right vertical line keep horizontal lines open towards right horizontal steps down uh, drawn in the step 3 is the graph of y equal to f of gix if you go through the how to uh, draw the sketch of y equal to gi of fx uh, what these uh, these are the vertical lines we just instead of vertical you have to go for horizontal so what we are doing uh, we are marking the points on the x axis there we have to in y equal to gi of fx we have to mark the points on y on y axis uh, rather than x axis you have to mark the integral points on y axis here you have to mark the integral point on x axis and then go ahead for to drawing the graph of f of gix so let me explore this in detail on the board okay so let me take this as a graph here before this to draw the graph you have to go for y equal to x axis and y axis as let this be y axis and this here x axis fine here i have drawn y axis and x axis then uh, i am drawing any function y equal to fx say let this be y equal to fx okay and now we are interested to find the graph of y equal to y equal to let me write down here as y equal to f of gix so we'll draw by red color so before this we you will use green color this to mark the integral points as despite of gi of fx we have to uh, put the integer marks on x axis rather than y axis actually in gi of fx we have marked the integer on y axis you can see over there but here for f of gix you have to mark the integer on x axis 1 2 3 here zero you can say this is minus 1 let's say this is minus 2 let's say this is minus 3 and so on so here you can go for like this simple dotted line dotted line and here this is these are the dotted lines you say y axis can also be considered as a for dotted lines here minus 2 and minus 3 although there is no role of this minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 uh, let me take this graph extend it here like this way and now with this blue mark i will show where these green lines intersects this yellow lines so let mark this this first first of all these points these points will play the role for f of gix for f of gix fine so as f of gix you know uh, this is the part over here so wherever there is the intersecting point from the previous vertical line you have to meet these lines so i will use the red color for this for f of gix as a function here 
if you see at x equal to 1 this point is 1 so from 1 to 2 we will meet like this way and we will mark like this circle we will meet like this way we will meet later on by like this way we will meet like this way okay we will meet uh, sorry we will meet on this line and uh, here you have to mark this point i will raise this later on here this is the these red parallel lines are the uh, which is parallel to x axis are the f of j of x so we will go and uh, practice over on any function of uh, any function as uh, we have uh, this explore our idea on such increasing function the same pattern you can go for decreasing pattern also or any of the function which has a periodic nature also we can also go through f of gx that doesn't matter so let's see uh, we will take an example of y equal to e to the power x so how to explore e to the power x graph e to the power x means y equal to we will go for y equal to e to the power g i x y equal to e to the power g i of x we will take an example you also try yourself you just plot the graph of y equal to e to the power x simply it process through 0 comma 1 as increasing it shares uh, second and first quadrant uh, gradually increasing function and uh, later on when in positive region when you will give then it will increase sharply and uh, in negative x you will find between 0 to 1 so uh, you have to mark the points integer points on x-axis and then go ahead let's try yourself and then come to the video let's get, let's see here we are using y equal to e to the power g i of x you can see over here so if you say then i can use explain this uh, once again y equal to e to the power x here how to draw y equal to e to power x you see y equal to e to power x g i we have to use right we have to use g i so to understand this let me draw x axis and y axis here this is x axis this is y axis here you know this is y equal to this is 0 comma 1 you know and it is passes here y equal to e to power x now you know this is a you have to mark this first of all integer points on x axis 1 2 3 4 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 like this and 0 also so here you have to put the line parallel to y axis and these were the uh, stages uh, steps for drawing y equal to e power g i of x as any of f of g i of x you have to go like this way okay like this okay fine so anyhow mark these integer points over here uh, let me use this green color over here this is green because we have to overline for blue color later on and here what be these points are there where the, these are the you can say intersecting points so here fine so now use this blue color for to join this line this is let this mark here here now mark with this here you can mark this okay fine here you can mark with this here you can mark this here you can mark this here you can mark this you have to be very uh, precise over here to making this y equal to e power j of x so this blue uh, horizontal line although on every integer you will find there is a hole means it is not a consisting the function as this, these are the points uh, x equal to 1 if it is x equal to 1 that is this is e you know if x equal to here if you say x equal to 2 over here so at this corresponding 2 point here you say this part is there is e to power 2 and here that is e to power 3 you can say like this let me uh, clarify this picture in detail you see this here there is a graph y is equal to e to power g i of x so f x f of g i x y equal to e to power x first of all we have drawn here here this is y equal to e to the power x you know e to power x okay where is it yeah. okay fine so here this is y equal to this is y equal to e to power x okay this is the graph and later on we will go for uh, this one gi of fx so for gi of fx you have to mark these integer points although these dotted lines we have marked over here these dotted lines you know 
and here and then after we have joined these in marked integer points these marked integer points and then we are joining this previous integer points and uh, this is a way to draw y equal to e power j x draw the horizontal line parallel to x axis from the points of intersection to meet the nearest right vertical line keep horizontal lines open towards right right this is the way to draw y equal to e power j of x okay so let's we take one more example which has uh, which are uh, mixed type concepts of increasing and decreasing function that is a uh, i equal to sin x as it is a periodic as i have already said this you can explore this in periodic concepts also so let this see you say y equal to this is sin x once again at f at x axis if you see at every integer we have drawn a line parallel to passing through uh, these integers parallel to y axis and uh, then after wherever there is a integer points here intersecting this blue line blue sin x graph uh, crawling over on x axis here there is a you have to mark these all integers so let me draw over here only to clarify this idea so i will mark you over here with uh, red dots uh, for where the points are intersecting on uh, these curves right yeah, here this point this point so whenever you will, you will we will draw here this is not a red point hold let me uh, erase this immediately so you see here once again this is these points are the are where uh, these curves on these curves they are marking this like this way okay so from very previous point here you have to mark this as on the uh, successive integer and line parallel to x axis as like from 0 to 1 if you see 0 to 1 how we will draw we have to go like this way and at 1 you have to make a circle at 1 you have to make the circle here also you have to make the circle here also you have to make the circle right although here it's not very clearing uh, clarifying over here so here uh, between right okay so from this over here these are the integer points so in this way what we say here this is the sin 1 uh, function and uh, these are the integer points you say some mistake is going on yes 0 sin 1 and from 1 to 2 sin 2 right sin 1 sin 2 is somewhere here above all the it all lies between this one so y equal to sin of j of x this way. so draw horizontal line from the point of intersection to meet the nearest right vertical line keep the horizontal lines open towards right always you have to keep the horizontal line towards a right words okay so here i have done simple mistakes let me cross check that here somehow mistake is there so let me go like this way this is the another point and this is somewhere this point so between this to this you have to make this integer and uh, fine and then after you have to go at any of this is the graph of y equal to sin of gix you can look over here y equal to sin of gx between 0 to 1 that is 0 to 1 okay the graph goes like this way and uh, from 1 to 2 so okay uh, in transformation time we will compile over here y equal to gi of fx although we have discussed this in previous video also again once again uh, we will discuss as i have told that we will discuss later on uh, for y equal to gi of fx so y equal to gi of fx um, despite of f of gi of fx what we are drawing the lines parallel to x parallel to y axis on the integer marked over x axis here we will do in different way that you have to mark the integer on y axis and then draw lines parallel to um, x axis and then we have to check where the, check those points where the graph intersects over here so let me show this step 1 is draw equal to y equal to fx and second uh, step that is draw line k, y equal to k horizontal is separated by unit distance till they intersect the graph k equal to i integer from the point of intersection of the above horizontal lines with the graph of y equal to fx at draw a vertical line 
from each intersecting step four from each intersecting point draw horizontal lines up to the nearest right vertical lines such that the horizontal line is always below the graph horizontal steps drawn in step four is the graph of y equal to j of fx so let me see about y equal to how to draw y equal to j of fx as this is you know y axis and this what you call x axis so here what we have to say uh, y equal to fx we have to draw the graph so draw the graph of y equal to fx here and uh, this is and uh, let me show this y equal to fx like this here y equal to fx and then after we have to mark the integer points on y axis as this is one this led to this led three four zero minus one minus two minus three like this and now extend these lines or on this graph extend extend this line on these graph like this way like this way like this way x axis itself is also the part of these lines these such lines so it's not very clear you can draw these graph in a very relax manner step by step on your graph paper you can also draw along with me so that to get better understanding and optimum result let me cross over this line now mark these integer points where these graph are intersecting with these orange lines so on these orange line orange line where this graph is marking over here and now intersect this with the help of this one by red color just i will use y equal to fx gi of fx gi of fx we will go for so here we will go like this way here in the right side you have to mark this integer as here you see these are the integers so here 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 this part so these red horizontal lines which are parallel to x axis these are the part of integers okay so these are the integer parts wherever the, this is uh, bottom point of the above coming integer it crossovers so this is the integer points and here in the right side you have to make the circle circle means this is whole not the part of the graph here the result will be okay so let's see uh, one example over here y equal to gi of x by 2 also although in the previous lecture also i have taken this example same example so i will compile this example once again y equal to x by 2 line we have to draw over here so i will uh, take a quick review over here so y equal to x by 2 y equal to x by 2 by using y equal to mx plus c means it's passing through origin from 0 0 so y equal to x by 2 graph you can draw over here and uh, all the uh, as these dotted line shows that is a parallel to x axis these dotted lines graph you have to uh, draw uh, which is which are parallel to x axis where it intersects uh, on these lines mark those points here and on these marks points uh, on the previous vertical lines pre previous uh, intersecting points you have to draw join the lines over there and right side you have to make the holes and on the left side you have to make the uh, bold dots so this is the y equal to gi of x by 2 graph here from each intersection intersection points draw horizontal lines up to the nearest vertical line such that the horizontal line is always below the graph so y equal to gi of x by 2 this is our way to one we'll take one more example as a type some periodic uh, type of function as sine type so uh, let's see another illustration y equal to in terms of some sign y equal to you can also in the previous video i have used y equal to 2 sin x gi you can go through and check over there so i will go for new transformation so i am not emphasizing on y equal to gi of fx in detail as uh, the previous video i have discussed detail let's go for transformation 11 that is y equal to fx draw the graph gi y equal to fx 
This is a candle type of graph. You also call candle graph. So uh, to plot g i y equal to f x, use the following working rule. Step one: draw y equal to f x, right? Simply draw y equal to k horizontal lines separated by unit distance till they intersect the graph, where k belongs to i integer. Mark the intersection points of the horizontal lines with the curve. Draw vertical lines of unit length starting from the intersection of the next upper horizontal line. Do not include upper point of these vertical lines. The vertical line drawn in step four is the graph of GIY equal to f x. Let me once again revise for fourth step. That is a very important over here. Uh, as uh, in the third step, wherever you are marking the point, mark the intersection points. Of these horizontal lines with the curve, wherever you are marking the intersecting points, you have to notice over here, despite of f of g i x g i of f x type of graph here in g i y equal to f x graph, what you have to say draw c draw y equal to draw vertical line of unit length right of unit length starting from the intersection of the next upper horizontal line. Okay, uh, do not include. Uh, the upper point. Why we are using over here uh, in unit length? Unit length means at f after at every unit uh, unit uh, length means at uh, unit length you will find another integer, right? So g i y becomes one, g i y becomes two, g i become becomes three. G i y are not going to take some value of like one point two or one point three or one point five. Means in decimal fraction, g i y is not going to take any value. So g i y, if we it can take any integer value, so uh, uh, any other integer is coming before the integer after unit length. So that's why we are using over here. That is the unit length. You know, this is unit length. What we are using over here, unit length is starting from the uh, intersection of the next upper horizontal line. Do not include upper point of these vertical lines. Right. Where is the hole? As like in the horizontal lines, in the right side we are not using the point. We are putting the holes over here. So in the upper portion we are using the holes here. Do not include the upper point of these vertical lines. The vertical drawn in step four is the graph of g i y equal to f x. This is the graph of g i y equal to f x. So let's take an example to draw over here. So let's see. As a So let me illustrate over here. G i y equal to f x. So let's see how to draw this g i of y equal to f x. First of all, what we have to do? We have to draw y equal to f x. This let this be x axis. This is what I call y axis. Here I have drawn y equal to f x randomly. Y equal to f x. We have drawn. Like this, uh, y equal to f x. Okay, fine. Now mark the integer points on y axis here. You have to say let this be one, this be two, this be three, this be four, and so on. So here, what we have to do from one point, you have to go like this way. Mark this point. From one here like this, and zero also, minus one also, like this, and uh, you know here this is one after one that is two point, so on two points here somewhere, on three point here somewhere, on four point here somewhere. So we have to search at which value of x of y equal to f x. Attains one, so here, you know, some for negative x that is attaining here. One. Let me erase this part. Erase this part, and here uh, we'll mark this with the red colors wherever there is integer points with these green uh, dotted lines are intersecting with this blue curve. So now, and what will be the G I of f x curve? So G I of f x curve, if you see here, then here we have to lift it like this, like this, and here if you see, let me 
extend these all green line here and then gi of fx another one here graph and the graph is here these are the also called candle graph this is also called candle graph let me write candle graph okay so these are the just like candle type of a structure somehow and uh, suppose some integer marked over here then we will go for left up the graph like this and so on and on the upper part you have to make a dot like the mixed circle type of structure so let me take example to understand uh, all this so let's see y equal to fx and but we have to uh, go like this way this is some transformation well we'll take example over here giy equal to x square by 2 so giy equal to x square plus 2 we are interested to draw the graph here over here so uh, to draw giy equal to x square plus 2 as you know the y equal to x square plus 2 is a parabola y equal to x square plus 2 is you know this is a parabola you see y equal to x square is the graph which is that is that is the even power on x axis so graph is symmetric about y axis fine so and plus 2 we are you adding here plus 2 we are adding plus 2 graph so what we have to do the graph will uh, shift uh, above 2 unit if we are not shifting axis then graph will shift 2 unit above so there is no problem of drawing y equal to x square plus 2 that is the issue x square plus 2 that is the graph like this way where it ex extend up to 2 unit over here just you can see this is the blue line y equal to x square plus 2 and here you have to mark the integer points as uh, due to the lesser space uh, we won't uh, put at the value x equal to 1 over there so we are marking from 2 so 2 is the point where it vanishes at x equal to 0 so the value attains 2 and you know at x equal to 1 it attains 3 at x equal to root 2 it attains the value 4 corresponding to root 2 and minus root 2 the value of giy becomes 4 so that's why we say here uh, 2 3 4 these are the lines dotted lines which we are using over here this line you say this line 2 and 3 and 4 we are using over here and from 2 to 3 you have to lift the candles over there here in the right words if you see you have to draw the vertical lines of unit lengths starting from the intersection of the next upper horizontal lines next upper horizontal line means uh, as like if you see here uh, 2 to 3 between 2 to 3 at 2 point at x equal to 0 it is intersecting at 2 so you have to draw the graph like this here this is the corresponding graph 2 to 3 here you have to mark and from at x equal to 1 it attaining value 3 from 3 to 4 here once again you have to mark like this here root 2 at root 2 here you have to mark like this way and similarly here also as this is you know there is a uh, even power on x variable so graph is symmetric about y axis as like in right side here in left side also on just on x equal to 0 that is the value uh, lying on y axis so this is the candle graph these are the candle kind of graphs here okay fine next uh, new transformation we will go for transformation number 12 uh, x equal to gi of fy x equal to gi of fy for uh, to draw x equal to gi of fy you have to follow the following steps step number one draw y x equal to fy draw x equal to k uh, vertical line separated by unit distance where k belongs to integer it means uh, as like in uh, before this we were drawing parallel to x axis here we have to x equal to k means parallel to y axis we have to draw so and the third step take the projection of the curve over the vertical line just left off, left to it and the same process you have to apply over here that's okay so let's take some example over here that is so x equal to root y to draw x equal to root y as you know if you make a square both side so that is y equal to x square if there is x even, x, even power on x variable then graph symmetric about y axis so x is equal to root y as we are uh, looking over here we have to look over for x equal to root y this is the coming from uh, x square is equal to y you know x square is equal to y in x square is equal to y if you see there is a graph like this way here there is an even power on x variable so graph is symmetric about y axis so we have to consider only uh, we have to consider the graph which is in positive region 
not in re negative region right so we can consider for x equal to root y x equal to root y this is that at x equal to 1 2 3 the corresponding value of y attaining over here that is 1 4 and 9 so for x equal to root y but on the root y we have to make a gi as uh, in the previous y equal to gi of fx what we were doing over here that is the same process on the along with y axis we have to do so here so you have to what we have to do as a, we have to draw a line parallel to y axis on marking integer on x axis as 1 2 3 we have marked over integer over here and we have already drawn the parallel lines on x axis look here these are the x axis on these x axis you have to mark this integer and on these integer you have to put the point of intersection these are the point of intersection you see you see these are the point of intersection on these point of intersection you have to draw a line uh, parallel to x axis uh, parallel to x axis of the preceding integer means considering preceding so means uh, uh, corresponding on y axis you will get the value on y so 1 4 9 these are points and from these points you have to draw candle graph uh, candle graph like, like this way that it means on x equal to 1 you have to lift the value from 1 and from x equal to 2 corresponding value that is y equal to 4 so from 4 to 9 you have to lift over here because at x equal to 3 it attains 9 but on the 9 you have to make the circle and at x equal to 3 the corresponding value of 4 that is 16 so up to 16 you have to lift this graph subject to not subject is not to the scaling over here on the graph as uh, 16 9 is far ahead fine this is the graph So we will take one more example over here to now the new transformation 14 y is equal to fx and we are interested to find the graph of y equal to fraction part of fx to draw y equal to fraction part of fx draw y equal to k horizontal line corresponding to the integral parts transfer the graph between two consecutive lines to the interval y belongs to 0 to 1 because fraction part consists only the value between 0 to 1 this is the range of fraction part of x uh, don't include the points lying on the graph uh, lying on the line y equal to 1 so on this one uh, let's be taking example to solve over here let's see uh, y equal to we are interested to find uh, fraction part of e to power x how to find fraction part of e to power x so simply y equal to e to power x you have to graph draw the graph here we are drawing the graph of y equal to e to power x graph over here so in the next graph what we say here between two consecutive lines transfer the graph between in the interval 0 comma 1 so in the interval 0 comma 1 what the graph is goes like this way let me see uh, so in the interval uh, between 0 comma 1 if you see the graph is here let me roll out the graph here this part of the graph is between 0 to 1 between 0 to 1 if you see once again let me dim this and here the blue line this part is lies between 0 to 1 so here what we have to do you have to transfer this graph you have to transfer this graph between uh, 0 to 1 so between 0 to 1 uh, you have to transfer so what it means which is between 0 to 1 graph as it is here we will interpose uh, we will impose the graph as in the right side if you can see over here this is the graph same so we'll use another color between 0 to 1 so between 1 to 2 uh, between 1 to 2 the corresponding value is uh, 2 how it 2 comes at a uh, log 2 means e to the power e to the power you know ln 2 e to the power ln 2 that is called 2 so this 2 is coming this 2 is coming corresponding to this ln 2 part this is ln 2 part ln 2 part so on ln 2 part this uh, we have to recall this part of the graph this part of the graph this part of the graph comes here downward so if you use uh, ln 2 to ln 3 between ln 2 to ln 3 the graph is like this way blue part I am uh, take uh, let me take one another color some 
like red color this red part so between ln2 to ln3 part you see here the graph is this is red part and if you see over here that is uh, some other color we will take let me take this one orange color uh, beyond 3 beyond 3 to 4 this part so ln3 to ln4 you can see this part so you have to shift these graphs shift these graphs be between 1 to 2 nothing else you have to do so let me take some more example to understand this or here you can see let me uh, revise the same example over here as a this is this was y equal to e to power x graph y equal to e to power x graph fine so between e to power x graph what we have to say we have to go for 0 to 1 this is 0 this is 1 and here let me show this this is 2 this is 3 so 2 is coming e to power x when e to power x attains 2 at ln 2 when e to power x attains 3 at ln 3 so here what we are doing uh, you have to mark this point we are we have to use this the graph with the red color y is equal to fraction part of e to power x what we have to use fraction part of e to power x we have to use this one okay like this so what we have to do uh, we have to uh, we will uh, redraw with the red color right so let me draw with the red color between 0 to 1 uh, of our all negative real number we find between 0 to 1 the graph is between 0 to 1 but between 0 to 1 we have to shift these all graphs we have to shift these all graph between 0 to 1 whatever the graph is extending in any of the region so uh, let me trace this with blue part this blue part uh, you have to stretch this blue part downwards as this is here this is the red part here and this will be the part this part we are stretching downwards now for this part we are between ln2 to ln3 once again we will stretch this as downward like this and this as downward we will stretch this part which part we are stretching over here that is the green shaded part we are uh, putting over here this green part we are stretching downwards we are uh, this one we are splitting this green part and we are taking this downward and lying between 0 to 1 we we will uh, compel it to come in 0 to 1 range so this is the part of fraction part because fraction part of any of the function its range will be uh, spanned over 0 to 1 so this is the graph and so on the graph will go like this way and so on this is graph so any other function you can attain let you take some more example over here let me take some another example for the function that is say let's see any another function x-axis and this is y-axis fine so let me take this one y equal to uh, some another example y equal to x square plus 3 right one two three so between x square plus three the graph is less like this way so we have to uh, recall zero to one zero to one part this graph as this graph is between zero to one the graph is portion is this so we will uh, recall this what here at this for fraction part of x square plus three and here this part we will go for this part and like this part and here also this part we will we have to ignore it okay fine hope so you are getting anyhow so this is transformation 14 let's take some more example y equal to fraction part of 2 sin x y equal to fraction part of 2 sin x is extended from minus 2 to plus 2 range this is the sin x graph and uh, between 0 to 1 whatever the graph you have to uh, put it there as it is and beyond 1 to 2 we have to take it this graph between 1 to 2 like this so this part if you okay, you just try yourself and then go for solution so i have given this uh, to work out between 1 to 2 how you will go for 1 to 2 between 1 to 2 you know you have to uh, pull this graph downward like this way this part is 1 to 2 so you have to pull this graph like this 
right and this part you have to pull this graph this part here like this part okay between 1 to 2 and this will be as it is this will be as it is right and uh, later on other part also you have to make it in between 1 to 2 this is the solution you see right and other, well, well, the part which is in negative region also you have to lift that in positive region the part which is you see the part which is in negative region also you have to lift this in positive region so one more point is to be noted this part here you have to uh, lift this part between 1 to 2 like this like this and this part what you have to do here you have to do like this way like this and this part once again you have to do like this way between 1 to 2 you have to means all the graph you have to stretch the graph as it is between 1 to 2 this part so let's see this is the graph here 1 to 2 right these are the points you can see over here y equal to fraction part of 2 sin x so any of the graph you can lift means uh, you have to cut the portion of the graph which is lying between uh, any uh, consecutive integers uh, 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 along with y axis and and then you have to uh, lift down the uh, curve uh, which is spanned within 0 to 1 interval 0 to 1 means i am uh, taking about along with y axis so let's see another transformation transformation 15 that is giy equal to fx to draw giy equal to fx uh, then what we have to do uh, draw the graph of y equal to fx then retain the graph of y equal to fx which lies between 0 to 1 left half close interval right neglect the graph for other values also repeat this graph in the same interval for x but for all the intervals y belongs to n to n plus 1 let's take an example gi y equal to e to the power minus x gi y equal to e to the power minus x so you see the graph of y equal to e to the power x lying between 0 to 1 interval on y along with y axis is for every x positive real number so for every x positive real number this bold line part here that is the graph you have to retain this and other part which is in negative region because it is beyond x equal to y equal to 1 these graphs you have to delete at this portion so these have to reject and only the portion you have to consider between 0 to y belongs to 0 to 1 that is the point to be noted we have to retain the graph where y belongs to 0 to 1 y belongs to that is 0 to 1 or uh, this point is to be noted where 0 is close and 1 is open uh, one is open right so here what we have to go uh, and this graph you have to repeat or on every another consecutive integer of y so between 1 to 2 the same pattern of the graph as like this you see over here that is y uh, equal to e to power minus x so y minus 1 equal to e to power minus x you have to lift the graph one unit above so whatever the graph lying between 0 to 1 that is lying between 1 to 2 that is the same pattern of lying between 3 to 2 2 to 3 means and uh, then 3 to 4 uh, means the graph is decreasing that's why i'm saying like this way so 3 to 4 graph is here decreasing pattern and between 0 to minus 1 between uh, uh, you can say minus 1 to 0 not 0 to minus 1 so minus 1 to 0 and minus 2 to minus 1 once again the graph is same pattern uh, minus 3 to minus 2 all the graphs is same pattern although these are not the uh, function these are you can say curve so gi of y another function transformation we will go for x equal to f of y x equal to fraction part of f of y so x equal to fraction part of f of y how to draw draw uh, x equal to f y whatever the function we will provide over there and draw a vertical line corresponding to the integral values of x transfer transfer the graph between two consecutive vertical lines to the region where x belongs to 0 to 1 don't include the points lying on x equal to 1 right let's see this is graph x equal to fraction part of y x equal to fraction part of y how to find 
x equal to y, you have to graph, uh, draw a line, y equal to x, that is x equal to y, same line, y equal to x is the line passing through origin making angle 45 degree from positive x axis. And here for x equal to fraction part of y, you have to, uh, have to draw, we have to consider the graph which is lying between 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, this part is there. You see this part, this part is to be considered only. This part of the graph is to be considered over here. And rest part you have to reject. Only this part we have to consider. This part you have to consider. You have to consider only this part. We have to consider this part only. Right? This part. So this part 0 to 1. Here here we will we will go for this. This this value here. And only this part will be repeat over here at every integer. This same part will go for one, uh, 0 to 1, 1 to 2 and so on. For that is for x equal to x equal to fraction part of f of y. Correct. Now one last transformation we will go for y equal to fx, y equal to signum function of fx. How to draw signum function. Before this I want to clarify what is signum function. So let's go for signum function. First of all, the definition of signum function is, uh, let me go for a definition of this signum function. You see, the signum function is favorite of IITJ. So we say here, y equal to SGN of x. SGN of x. SGN is uh, x is short form we write SGN of x and we pronounced signum function. Achha, sometimes students say signum, not signum function, there is signum function, right? Signum of x. Signum of x is equal to 1 if x is greater than 0, x equal to 0 if it is 0, x is less than 0, the value attains minus 1. If you draw the graph of signum function, then this is x axis and this is what you call y axis. This is the x equal to 1 line and uh, y equal to 1 line and at x positive. So here you have to mark 0. This is x equal to 0 of course and so x equal to y equal to minus 1. This is minus 1. For all negative this is minus 1. Right. So what we say here uh, that is uh, Now, signum function that we say um, as we are interested to find this one y equal to uh, x y equal to fx so for y equal to signum of fx how will plot draw y equal to fx then draw y equal to 1 for fx positive draw y equal to minus 1 for fx is negative draw y equal to 0 for fx equal to 0 this can be explained this is the same pattern what the definition of signum before I told the other. So let us we discuss here in detail as uh, uh, for signum of fx if you see once again the definition of signum of fx what I wrote over there initially that is 1 for x is greater than 0 right for x equal to 0 that is 0 for x less than 0 that is minus 1 and if you see the same definition I will convert for signum of fx. So let me introduce instead of x we write fx. So here if fx is positive then of course 1. Here if fx is equal to 0 of course 0 and in fx is z, uh, negative then it is minus 1. Now this much is the definition of signum of fx. So you see wherever the fx is positive you know fx is positive signum is attaining the value is here 1. Signum is attaining the value 1. Where fx is negative here, 0 the value is attaining 0. When fx is uh, negative, the signum is attaining minus 1. Signum attains only, signum, the range of signum fx, you know, range of SGN of fx, fx, you know, it is always only three values, minus 1, 0 and 1. It never attains any else value. So, that is, uh, you have to search out for which values of x fx becomes positive, you have to make it 1. For which values of fx, fx becomes 0, uh, you have to make it 0. For which value x, fx becomes corresponding values of x, 
for which fx becomes negative that is signum fx attains minus 1 so let's we take an example to understand this so let's see here uh, that we say uh, let me draw the graph of any y equal to to make a complete understanding over here so signum of ln x sgn of ln x we are interested to draw so before this to draw ln x we have to first of all draw the graph of ln x we have to draw the graph of ln x here so for first of all we will draw the graph of ln x and we will see where ln x vanishes where ln x is positive and where ln x is negative so we can see very easily that here what do you see that ln x is positive where ln x positive uh, all the values of x greater than 1 for all the values of x greater than 1 ln x becomes positive ln x is positive for x is greater than 1 so for this value signum will become what signum will become signum will become 1 right so for x is equal to 1 x equal to 1 ln x vanishes ln x vanishes and for x less than 1 you know ln x is equal to that is um, ln x is negative you can say ln x is negative so sgn of ln x also sgn of ln x let me tabulate it so what about sgn of ln x so here we see, see if we see over here sgn of ln x sgn of ln x that what we call here that it will become uh, 1 here that is 0 and here minus 1 so you can draw the graph with here sgn of ln x where it is 1 at x equal to 1 it it will attain 1 so the graph is like this way at x equal to 1 it is just 0 and x equal to less than that is minus 1 so it uh, attains here you see this is the graph over here here this is graph uh, we can see over here also here this is this will the point you know this is 1 by e we got x equal to 1 by e it attains the value minus 1 ln x attains minus 1 so this is the point and x equal to 1 it attains the value at x equal to 1 it attains 0 and x equal to e it attains the value 1 so this is the corresponding value of 1 this is y axis over here and this is the graph white portion is the graph of s of ln x so let's we take more example over here sgn of ln x which we take the illustration over there the, let's see here sgn of ln x same graph what we say here what we saw uh, before, before this that is where we have took the illustration that is sgn of ln x we have drawn the ln x graph and sgn of ln x wherever the ln is positive means x greater than 1 and x greater than 1 ln is positive so at x equal to 1 you find x equal to 0 this is the part of the graph here x equal to uh, less than 1 and of course x is, uh, which is less than 1 not we have to go for less than 0 you have to be positive because ln x domain is also positive so you have to draw the y, line y equal to 1 from x is greater than 1 and for x equal to 1 you have to draw the line y equal to 0 and uh, for the x less than 1 and of course greater than 0 you have to draw the line y equal to minus 1 that is the sgn of ln x graph let's see more okay you can go through uh, some more practice for uh, graph transformation before this one more lecture i have already uh, given the idea of transformation and in the next coming lecture we will uh, use these transformation for uh, completion of inverse trigonometric function to make the complete understanding of the balancing of the equation of inverse trigonometric functions so we are and, uh, we are now capable to uh, understand the balancing of inverse trigonometric function with the help of these transformations so you uh, to uh, make a complete understanding of the next coming lecture uh, you all are urged to make a complete revision of this transformation before the lecture of the transformations means transformation 1 to transformation 16 what I have uh, taught over here besides the domain range and graph of inverse trigonometric make it practice and then you will get complete understanding of the next coming video.